Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the previous video, I installed the Chimera intake for the 2022 Grom from Steady Garage. Again, haven't seen too many, if any, actually out uh, in production for this bike yet. Uh, but with that on and the RS9T full exhaust from Yoshimura, I decided to do some engine management. So I've got the uh, A-Racer RC Mini 5, and this one's specifically for the MSX 125. It says 2021, but that's because that's the year it came out in Asia. Uh, but this is specifically for uh, the, for us, the 2022 Grom. Um, and at the same time, I borrowed the AF1 wideband module from my 2019 Honda Monkey. Uh, that bike is well dialed in, so while it's nice to keep an eye on AF, um, it's running really well, and as long as I'm monitoring temperatures, I should be good to go. So let me dig into this, figure out where the ECU is. The replacement for the RC Mini 5 should just be plug and play. The AF1 requires uh, putting the O2 sensor into the uh, bung in the exhaust, but the Yoshimura exhaust has a port for that, so that should just be a screw-in. And then I need to tap into power um, and ground, but that's about it. So it should be pretty straightforward. Then we'll be able to link up to the phone, set some fuel tables, and uh, start to tune this thing up. On the 2019 Monkey, the ECU as well as the fuse box is all underneath the seat, so it's really easy to access. I don't think it's underneath the seat for the Grom, though. Uh, having looked under here before, there's the battery and uh, actually it looks like the fuse box is here, but I don't see the ECU. In other videos I've looked at for previous generation Groms, it looks like the ECU is usually right around here, so I'm going to back off these three washers and uh, see if we can figure out where that is. All right, and as soon as I pull that panel off, it looks like it's probably this thing right here. And I may need to remove this plastic to get to it. It looks like uh, the it has this rubber boot that slips off this way. This side can come off, but this side looks like it's going to be retained by this plastic piece. So there's a little pop uh, rivet here, a bolt, and I think this washer also for me to back this off enough that I can slip this out. All right, so I took out a screw here, a screw here, a pop rivet here, and took out the bolt holding this washer so that I have some flexibility in the back side of this fairing and that should be enough for me to just work this uh, rubber boot that's holding the ECU to the frame. All right, and with that out, uh, take the rubber boot off. There's a gray clip here that you slide out, and then the ECU should slot out. So you can tell that this is uh, very different looking than the previous ECUs that came on the Grom. Uh, it has this little rubber seal and looks entirely different, but we will be replacing that with the RC Mini 5. And again, this looks very different than the previous model as well. It only goes in one way. And that should be it. Uh, to get this rubber boot back on though, I think I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the top here because I need uh, these cables to come through. This will connect to the AF1 and the USB blink module uh, so that I can monitor O2 and connect it to the phone. So let me kind of cut some of this rubber out. Okay, so I just cut out the top part of this rubber boot, which looks like should fit um, in its rubber so it'll stretch a bit. The top part of the RC Mini 5 is a little bit taller, plus I also need to run these wires through it. So let me see if I can get uh, this on through the RC Mini 5 attached to the harness, uh, and then I can button this side up. So there's this little plastic plate that uh, just backs off with two screws and that gives you better access to uh, some of the space right here in the front of the uh, under seat area. And it also has these nice little cutouts so I'll be able to route these wires uh, up through it once I replace this panel. But I'm gonna leave it off because I also need to run the O2 sensor. I'm just gonna run it up along the side of the bike and screw it into the bung. And then I should be able to put 
the AF1 and all the wires uh, in this area here. Everything should be pretty plug and play. Okay, next day I had to take a break. It was getting way too hot in the garage yesterday and I had to stop by the auto parts store to get some fuses. Uh, but here I have the sensor going into the Yoshi exhaust. I just have it routed up here along the side of the bike and then up into the under seat area here. I also found the grounding here um, where all the other ground leads are coming into. So I just uh, have my line coming off on this side here. Uh, so this then is the power plug that also then goes to, uh, I have one of the fuses, I think this was the 12 volt DC fuse, Should pull it out. This is where the fuse was and this little piggyback, uh, both fuses, that existing fuse plus has a new hotline with its own fuse so that I can power the AF1. Alright, so this is a jumbled mess but I think everything's plugged up now. Uh, there's really only one way everything can connect up. You do also need to buy, and they have a two-prong. I have this four-way splitter that comes off of the A-Racer. Um, I only need two because I'm using the AF1 and the um, Bluetooth module. If you're using more, you do need to have the other two, but if you can get the two splitter, it's better because it takes up less space. Uh, but this is the Bluetooth module to connect to the phone. And again, everything else just kind of plugs in the only way that it can. So let me fire it up. I'm getting blinking on the AF1 and blinking on the Bluetooth device. Let's see. This is currently set up for the monkey. So let me see if... All right, so I was able to find the new one, I think, and now it says connected. And maybe it's good. It says, let me see if this is in focus. Engine temp is 79 degrees, which makes sense. Let's uh, fire it up and see what happens. So it seems to be hooked up correctly. I was getting AFR reading um, and RPM and the other metrics that I expected to see. So I'm going to try to clean this up, get everything closed up, get the side panels back on, and then we'll uh, start going through some of the tuning parameters. Okay, it's not gorgeous, but everything is snugged up now underneath the seat. All right, so I've got the bike button back up and I have this on my ram mount now. I have it angled more towards the camera so that you can see it clearly. But so let's take a look and see if there's any existing maps on it that'll work. And if not, I'm just going to set up target AFR and turn on auto-tune and start doing some riding. There's also a couple other little tweaks that I'll make at the same time. So turn on the engine. It very quickly finds the uh, new Bluetooth device. All right, so if I go to quick burn, the only maps that are available are for either the full stock setup or this says 170 CC with a big cam. Um, and probably more stock than not. I assume that's what's already flashed onto it, uh, but I'll go ahead and flash that first. So it looks like by default it has a target AFR of about 13.3, which is probably a little bit conservative given how uh, light my modifications are so far, but uh, it's probably a decent starting point. Quick start up. So that all works. Back to calibration. Uh, again, auto-tune, I want on. My target AFR, I'm going to leave with this 13.3 for most of the area, and then it gets up to or goes down to 13 or 12.8 uh, at the top end. Feel base stock, stock. RPM limit. Let's kick this up to 10,000. Okay, so let me put some 
uh, miles on the bike and see what the auto tune picks up. All right, it is way too hot to be wearing gear today, but figured if I'm gonna do a top speed run, it would be irresponsible if I didn't at least put on some pants and a jacket. So I'm going to hop on to 95, go uh, one direction, make a U-turn, come back the other direction, just so whatever top speed numbers I get uh, aren't influenced by the wind, although it's not very breezy today. It's uh, damn hot though. Uh, with the A-Racer installed and the auto-tune having figured out now, keeping everything right around 13.3 uh, uh, AFR, uh, everything feels really good. The bike sounds really good now. It actually sounds as loud as the monkey. If I don't absolutely melt doing this uh, high speed run, I thought I'd come back and do the monkey too because I'm not sure the last time that I did a top speed run on the monkey, so it'd be interesting to compare given that I've done such little modifications to this bike so far. And pretty extensive modifications on the monkey, but uh, this is feeling pretty zippy. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes almost as fast as the monkey does at this point. And the good thing, the speed limit here is 70 miles an hour, so whatever I'm doing probably won't even be illegal. All right, so I'm full up, not tucked, 67, GPS agrees. All right, so this is untucked. 67 seems about as fast as it wants to go here. Let me uh, get down a little bit. Alright, full tuck I was getting about 73. Once I come back up it uh can feel it slowing me down. Alright, so 67 untucked, 73 tucked. Again, I don't think there was any uh, grade or wind helping me out there, but we'll see if I get similar numbers coming back the other way. This ramp's a little bit downhill to give me a boost. So untucked, getting about the same 67 there. Go ahead and get a tuck. Yeah, tuck gets me about the same 72. So uh, both directions up 95 for a mile and a half. 67 untucked and uh, 73 full tuck. 72, 73 full tuck. Let's hot swap for the monkey. Now I'm hoping that the A racer just picks up the different Bluetooth device without too much trouble. Yeah, it looks like it doesn't just automatically find it. I think I need to go into settings and locate it. Alright. Now this won't be showing me AFR now because I don't have the AF1 on there. But again, as long as I'm keeping an eye on engine temps, I should be good. 
Yeah, this definitely feels like a bigger engine. It's can't believe people are doing gardening right now. It's like 100 degrees and a thousand percent humidity. It's not so bad when you're at speed, but when you're stopped, it's hot quick. Let's go. Oh yeah, only four gears on this one, huh? I don't have enough space to uh, get up to speed, but I can hit 70 easily without crouching over. Here we go. Stop getting 82 by GPS. So that was, I think, 75 that I was able to hold by just uh, sitting up with my body as a sail. And then once I got into tuck position, I was getting up to uh, 82 miles an hour. It was reflected both on the uh, speedometer as well as uh, the GPS that I've got going on the phone. So pretty impressed with that. I mean, that's really ringing this engine out. Okay, so excited to see a 82 mile an hour top speed run on the Monkey. Also pretty excited to see a 72 mile an hour top speed on the Grom, given how few engine components I've put on the bike so far, but happy that I've got the RC Mini 5 on there so that as I put on more modifications, it's easy to tune and uh, get the most out of them. So thank you everybody for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and keep on building.